I don't even want to think about where America would be right now were it not for common cause. But we're not still at a great place. In fact, in some ways, you could say we are 40 years after its founding, after John Gardner had this vision, we are now approaching a perfect storm. 40 years ago, the issue of money in American politics was a serious issue. John Gardner wrote a lot about it. He wrote about money and secrecy and politics. And we've never seen in American history as much money flowing to our nation's capital. This election that is coming up is an election in which, for the first time that I remember, there are hundreds of millions of dollars flowing to candidates, and we have no way of knowing who is providing this money at all. And when you have that much money that is inevitably influencing, if not driving, if not corrupting politics, people back home say to themselves, government does not work. And that perfect storm is particularly paradoxical and ironic right now because the problems that average working Americans are facing are greater than ever before, certainly ever before in most of our lifetimes, certainly since the 1930s. Problems with their homes and their jobs, problems with their environment, problems with their kids, problems trying to support themselves and send their kids to college and provide enough for themselves in their retirements. They see Wall Street bailed out, but they themselves feel that they got nothing. I mean, out of this kind of perfect storm, and here's the upbeat message. This is really a positive message. Are you ready for the positive message? Out of this kind of perfect storm actually comes either a public reaction of a sort that I just suggested, where public is so angry and so revolted at what has happened that the public decides we have had enough or we lose our democracy altogether. I have tremendous faith that out of this perfect storm will actually come the form of a renewed commitment to clean up politics and save our democracy. And I know that every time historically in this country we have faced a huge challenge to the basic principles of our founding fathers and our democracy. We have put ideology aside, we've rolled up our sleeves, and we've got on with what has to be done. We did it in the Civil War, we did it after the era of the Robert Barons and the city machines and the progressive era, the first decades of the 20th century. We did it again in the 1930s when nobody knew what to do and we put ideology aside and we tried things and we, we did it. We did it again and again and again. The civil rights struggle, the voting rights act, the civil rights act. We did it again in Vietnam or, and even after Watergate. Watergate, if we were in this room after Watergate, we would be we would be morose. We would say, what has happened to this system? What happened, though, is that it was a tipping point, another in a series of tipping points in which Americans say, no, we're not going to stand for this. We deserve better. And hence, I am very upbeat. <laughs> Not in the short term, but in the semi-short term. The principles that Common Cause dedicated itself to 40 years ago, that John Gardner founded this organization upon, are more relevant today than ever before.